I do have a few recommendations of what I can recommend to you to do and not to do while you're doing the Whole30 or getting ready for it. And I'll start with my don'ts because that list is a lot smaller. Number one for things not to do would be not to do the Whole30 to lose pounds and hit a certain goal on the scale. What I think is healthier is to find a pair of pants that barely buttons, doesn't button, but almost does, almost fits you, but not quite how you want, and use something like that that is a visual and, light, and um, physical example of where you're at that you don't wanna be, and by the end of it, you're not guaranteed to be smaller. You probably will be slightly, at least if anything, you won't be battling the bloat and inflammation that our everyday food causes. But use something like that as a measurement of how successful you want to be and you are with Whole30 and really just look at as Whole30 is getting healthier. Number two is don't go out and buy all these things that you don't know if you need yet. For example, I bought the Whole30 cookbook, which is separate from the Whole30 book, and I haven't used it once. It's actually not even at my apartment right now because someone's borrowing it and I haven't missed it. I didn't realize how many recipes were in the actual Whole30 book and so I haven't even needed the cookbook because I've gained enough from the Whole30 book. So that'll save you money right there. But there's things like that where don't buy a bunch of stuff right before you go into it. Just There's just a few things you need that I'll get into with my list of do's. Number three for my list of don'ts, don't go your whole Whole30 thinking after 30 days, I can have this. Don't end your whole 30 thinking, now I can eat whatever I want. Really try hard to think about the fact that you're doing whole 30 so that you can separate yourself from those things that really don't make you healthier and <laughs> ease back into having dessert or pizza or things like that and really just do them occasionally. It is so easy after you finish whole 30 speaking from experience, to just binge on all the things you haven't been able to have. My fourth and final don't is don't start until you're ready. Don't start until you've done your research and you feel like you really can be successful. All right, now for my recommendations on things you should do. Number one, give yourself time to prepare for Whole30. Pick a date to start, but don't make it tomorrow. Don't make it next week. Give yourself well, you give yourself a week or two weeks to really get more information, to learn what, what you really should avoid, to learn why you should do Whole30, and to read their books. Because if you go into it thinking, I'm just gonna cut out bread, dairy, and sugar for a month and I'll be fine, you're really not gonna get everything out of the Whole30 that you could get. Number two on my list of do's, do go through your pantry and your fridge. What I did, Probably is extreme, you don't have to do this, but I took everything out of my fridge, I took everything out of my cupboard, and then I put only put back the items that are Whole30 compliant. So I read every single ingredient, and I made a list of what I was getting rid of that I wanted to find an alternative that was compliant. And then I took everything, all of my food, and just laid it on the table so I could see everything I had took a few pictures, sent the pictures to friends and said, hey, do you want any of this food? And it's not that I was saying, here's all my unhealthy food, you can take this. I just really wanted to stick to what they say is compliant and non-compliant. And I did hold food for a month in our back room that had grains and things in it that weren't necessarily bad, but I wanted to cut out for the month and see how my body does digest those later once I've had a break from them and then I can understand what, how my body works better in regards to those things. It was really great to be able to open the fridge and open the cupboard and the only options that, that I saw were things I could eat. That was huge for me because that helped me be creative with what I could mix together. I didn't have to look at something and say, oh, well, that would be great in this recipe but I can't use it so what am I gonna do? Instead, I literally picked from whatever I saw. And that was really helpful. And you can't always do that though. You might not have family members who are doing the Whole30. And so with that, my recommendation would be 
ask if your family if you can just designate one section of your cupboard and one section of your fridge to foods you can have. You'll probably need a decent section because you're gonna eat a lot of food on the Whole30. <laughs> a lot of good food. But designate a section and put your name on it and say this is for you for Whole30. And um, I really hope that your family and friends are very supportive. Um, that brings me to another do. Number two, three, I think we're on three, is tell people that you're doing the Whole30. Make it public. I went to Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat and posted it and told my friends about it and my coworkers. And that helps keep you accountable like nothing else because if you are asked how you're doing on Whole30 and you say, oh, I gave up, I mean, that doesn't feel good at all because you gave up on it. But when you're able to say like, I'm doing really well and I feel really good because you will, at least by the end, some, there's some hard days, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it. Um, but just having that motivation in keeping that accountability from other people, that is really helpful. Keep a calendar. I would buy a calendar just for this. You can get it at the dollar store if you want. And I would mark on your calendar what day you're at and what part of the month it is. In the Whole30 book, they have suggestions um, or really they've labeled certain days of your Whole30 as what you're gonna feel and it is so true. And I thought I ate clean before so I wouldn't feel the same way, but oh my goodness, even the first day of eating different, it was, there's probably a lot of mental part to that, but I felt what they said I was gonna feel. It was crazy. The only thing I didn't feel was that my pants were tighter. I just didn't quite feel that my pants were not as tight. So I have my calendar here. Bought this on Amazon. I got a big one so that I could write on it and really see what day I was on and what they said. So I'll try and insert a clip of me filling this out, but I think that it's great to number every day, make a big deal about the day you start and finish, just go through the book and fill it out. All right, so number five on my list of things to do is set realistic goals. Again, going back to your scale, like if you set a goal that you wanna lose 10 pounds, it's not guaranteed you're gonna lose 10 pounds and you probably won't, maybe you will. But set a realistic goal of I want these pants to fit or I wanna feel this way and when you before you start, jot down how you feel. Take some pictures and see if this really is making a difference for you, and I know it will. If you put everything into this and do your homework and really try to be successful, you're going to be successful with it. And finally, my list of do's have to do with products to purchase, to eat, because you eat a lot and it's helpful knowing what things are gonna be treats or just be very helpful in the Whole30 process. So I have a few things here that I wanted to share that I lived off of during Whole30. My first thing I recommend is carbonated water with no added sugar, because again, with Whole30, actually I don't know if I, I think I forgot to mention that there's no added sugar in Whole30, no stevia, no natural sugar of like honey and agave. You just don't have sugar for the month and you feel really good after it, I will say. Um, but carbonated water, this brand is my favorite, LaCroix. And lemon is the best, by the way, if you're trying to figure out a flavor. Funny story, I thought you couldn't have it on Whole30 for some reason. I think I was associating it with another drink I'd been having that has an added sugar. It's like stevia or something, but I was thinking that was LaCroix and it wasn't at all. And I was a week or so into it. And then my friend was like, no, I've heard you can have that. And I look it up and it's on the Whole30 website. 
Another recommendation I have is to have nut mix on hand. The Whole30 book gives you a list of what nuts you can have more of or less of, and that's really handy. I recommend always having cashews and walnuts and almonds around because when you're first starting, the first week is really rough when it comes to needing snacks. And I didn't get to the point where I could do three meals a day with no snacking until after the first week. And I was really surprised because again, like I said, I thought I was eating clean, but I learned from this that <laughs> I had no idea what eating clean meant. The one thing I can't recommend enough is this book. It starts with food. It's a book that they recommend you read before Whole30. I recommend it more than anything, even if you don't do Whole30. I really recommend this book. And for me, being a person who can't read and stay focused, I can read, but I can't stay focused when I read, it was hard for me to really get into this at first, I picked it up so many times and read three or four pages and then put it back on my bookshelf for months at a time. But after everything happened and I was getting more interested, I started reading it and then found it on Audible. And I could listen to it on my way to and from work or just when I was out and about. And that made the world of difference. It gave me a chance to listen to things over and over again and really solidify why I believe what I believe about food and really help motivate me. So I highly recommend, it starts with food. It's one of the Whole30 books. And then, like I said, you don't need the Whole30 cookbook, but obviously you need the Whole30. I have lots of markers of my favorite pages and recipes, but the Whole30 book is great. And I honestly, I didn't read every bit of this because I had read It Starts With Food. The main thing I used the Whole30 book for was like with my calendar, I went through and marked what they suggested each day was gonna be like. And I also used it for the recipes because I didn't realize how many recipes were in this book and they're amazing. Um, quite often we had the frittata for breakfast. It was super easy and I learned a lot about cooking just from having to cook more. Um, let's see, we also did a lot of this chicken hash recipe, Melissa's chicken hash. Which by the way, it says that she created it because she was bored of eggs. And this is an amazing meal just to create because you were bored one day. Um, so props to Melissa for that for sure. Um, their seven day meal plan is a great, I can't see it, but um, on page 196, this is a great starter week. I referenced this week for the first week because I had no idea what to do. Even though I had done all this research, I felt like I still didn't know what to do. I referenced this meal plan that they have for a week and we had almost every meal throughout the week and it was really helpful for getting started and getting motivated. And after the week of going through that, then I mimicked that week the second week but just replaced some of the meals with different meals so we can mix it up a bit. And it was so much easier that way. Even if you have all of the education behind you, picking what you wanna make and actually seeing it through, that's tricky and difficult too. So I highly re recommend you get the Whole30 book and it starts with food as far as reading material. I'm almost done with items that I recommend. I highly recommend kombucha. I actually made this one myself. One of my friends started me on it. I had been talking about starting it and I hadn't seen her in a little while and she shows up at my door for a day we were hanging out and just says, here, here you go, here's a SCOBY, go ahead and make it. Anyways, kombucha, great for probiotics, great for vitamins, and it's a nice way to substitute, not substitute, sorry, you're not supposed to substitute items on here, but it's just a nice cold drink to have Especially if you do Whole30 during the summer, it's hot and most people have like wine spritz spritzers or beer <laughs> in the summer to enjoy. And it's nice to have something while your friends are drinking or just around that is healthy for you and it tastes good once you try it a few times. It's an acquired taste. Um, but definitely highly recommend kombucha while you're on Whole30. Then pre-shelled hard-boiled eggs. Costco has two packs of pre-shelled hard-boiled eggs. These are a lifesaver. I hate peeling eggs. I'll pay the couple extra bucks for them to be already shelled. But those were really handy, especially when I was working out, to have one of those before working out because I can't have protein bar, protein shake. That was really handy. 
The next recommendation, the Tessame brand, anything. They actually put on their labels whether or not their item is Whole30 approved. They, not everything is Whole30 approved, but they do have quite a few salad dressings, mayonnaise, and things like that that you can have on Whole30, and it's really nice if you don't have time to make mayonnaise, which I made and failed like five times, but it's possible, I did make some good ones. Um, but if you don't have the time to make the foods that you need and you need something quick you can, can grab, the Tesame brand is fantastic. We loved the ranch and went through at least six bottles of these in the month. My husband especially, since he was doing Whole30 with me, if he really liked a product, I got a lot of it so that I could keep him motivated and keep me motivated to continue Whole30 and see it through. And then the last thing I'll recommend, I'm sure I have more, but just of what I can think of is boxes of pre-made or pre-mixed salad. If you're cooking as much as you do on Whole30, you want easy pre-prepared food as much as possible if you can afford it. This actually was only a couple bucks, so it's really nice to be able to just grab this huge box of salad and for our lunches, a lot of the time what I did is I just made a bed of salad, stuck a you know, tuna or canned chicken or hard boiled eggs and veggies and just made it an easy salad without having to chop up the lettuce. Um, was really handy. I just have two more things to, that I recommend. They're kitchen gadgets. I would get a um, recipe book sleeve or cover that you just set your book in while you're making your food because you, you do cook a lot and it's really handy to have something that you can refer back to but not make a mess of and my book is already a little trash just from using it so much. And then I really recommend a spiralizer. I got this one at Costco, very cheap. And I recommend that for a lot of the recipes just to mix up your food and have some fun with it because you're having a lot of vegetables which most people don't like all the vegetables to begin with. And you're having a lot of fruit and a lot of meat and it's just nice to have variety. So definitely recommend that. All right, that's what I have for today's video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Hit subscribe for more of these videos and let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd wanna see. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.